Russia's invasion has been devastating for Ukraine's economy, and these losses also hit a group that until recently felt like it was untouchable, the Ukrainian oligarchs. As the conflict continues, their influence on the country's political and economic life is becoming weaker, and the estimated wealth of many oligarchs has more than halved. The reason for this is the wartime economy, but also targeted actions on the part of the Ukrainian government. And it looks like the Ukrainian oligarchs are in decline. Oligarchs have had a significant impact on Ukraine's economy. In 2021, they owned 36 of the 100 largest private enterprises in Ukraine. They are the richest people in the country. Rinat Akhmetov, Viktor Pinchuk, Igor Kolomoysky, and Petro Poroshenko are among those who have amassed fortunes worth over $1 billion. They control industries that are indispensable to other businesses and private consumers, such as providers of electricity, natural gas, and fuels. Their activities limit diversity and growth of competitors within their economic sector, and as main industry players, their businesses have taken a hit due to the war. In 2021 and prior to the war, Ukraine's economy had an annual growth rate of 3.4%. In terms of industry, it focused on trade and agriculture, transportation, mining and other industries. Since the beginning of the war, Ukraine's GDP shrank by 29.1% in 2022 and 13.5% in the first quarter of 2023. These losses have not been spread evenly and depended on geographical location. Factories and businesses in areas where clashes are ongoing have suffered the most, as well as exports that were largely carried out by sea. Ukrainian ports were partially unblocked as part of the grain corridor, but did not include industrial goods, such as steel products. Another challenge were frequent nationwide blackouts from October 2022 to March 2023, caused by Russian strikes on Ukrainian energy infrastructure. And in some cases, production was affected by direct fighting. All these factors influenced the businesses of Ukraine's oligarchs, but they were also affected by other measures undertaken by the Ukrainian government. Among those most affected is Igor Kolomoysky, who was considered close to President Volodymyr Zelensky during the first phase of his rule. The media owned by Kolomoysky supported Zelensky's election campaign and then his policies. In July 2022, Zelensky signed a decree that stripped the businessman of his Ukrainian citizenship, which in theory opened the way for his extradition to the United States, where he's facing money laundering trials. In April 2022, Kolomoysky also lost control of Ukrnafto Burina and in September 2022, Dnipro airport. Ukrnafto Burina is one of Ukraine's largest gas producers, which Kolomoysky managed with fellow oligarchs, Pavel Fuchs and Vitaly Hulomennik. Kolomoysky is facing multiple investigations, including into financial crimes at Ukrnafta and purchases of underpriced electricity. Kolomoysky had a minority stake, but essentially controlled Ukrnafta and Ukrtatnafta. Ukrnafta owns the largest network of petrol stations in the country and is also a leader in oil production. Last November, the National Commission on Securities and the Stock Market decided to hand them to the state treasury because of their importance for the war effort. In May 2022, more than half of the companies involved in regional gas distribution were taken over at the request of the State Bureau of Investigation. This step was formally justified by their debts related to the use of gas pipeline networks. The largest player in this segment of the market is the regional gas company, linked to Dmitro Firtash, a pro-Russian oligarch who has been under house arrest in Austria since 2014, at the request of the United States, which has charged him with corruption. Other examples of actions targeting oligarchs is establishing criminal cases against Konstantin Zhivaho, a businessman whose most important assets are in the iron ore mining industry, and Oleg Bakhmatyuk from the food and agriculture sector. Both cases are the culmination of proceedings that began back in 2014 and 2015 and are related to financial crimes in the banks they owned, Finance and Credit, which went bankrupt in 2014, and VAB, which filed for bankruptcy in 2015. International arrest warrants have been issued for the two oligarchs. Zhivaho was detained in France in December 2022, but the local court has refused to extradite him. A court in Vienna has taken the same decision with regard to Bakhmatyuk. It's difficult to conclusively say why the state has been targeting some oligarchs while staying neutral towards others. The nationalization of some of Kolomoysky's assets may have stemmed from the fact that he has failed to condemn Russian aggression and has given little support to the Ukraine armed forces. This attitude sets him apart from the likes of Akhmetov, Poroshenko and Pinchuk, all of whom have been actively helping Ukraine through their foundations. 
The oligarchization was one of the slogans used by the presidential camp in the final months before the outbreak of the war. In September 2021, the parliament passed the so-called Law on Oligarchs, which targeted individuals who met three of the following four conditions. Participation in political life, influence over the media, a dominant position in a particular sector of the economy, and assets worth more than $90 million. The act established a public register that would include people recognized as oligarchs by the National Security and Defense Council. According to its secretary, Oleksiy Danilov, the list could have included 86 names. The mere possibility of being included on the list has led some oligarchs to shift their positions. The former president, Petro Poroshenko, has divested his media assets. Rinat Akhmetov closed down his TV channels and websites in July 2022, while Vadim Novinsky has resigned as a deputy of the Ukrainian parliament to avoid meeting the criterion of having political influence. The short term does not look good for oligarchs. The government is unlikely to release its control over media coverage to the oligarch owners of television channels until the end of martial law. Previously, this was one of the most important tools by which big business influenced government officials and political life in the country. Nor should we expect strong economic growth that would boost the revenues of oligarch companies. The latest forecasts from the National Bank of Ukraine show a 2% growth in 2023 and 4.3% the following year. This means that the financial situation of most companies will remain difficult. It is also an open question if financial losses will lead to a wave of bankruptcies, especially as a number of companies are struggling with debt and will find it increasingly difficult to settle their liabilities. The influence of big business is also limited by the fact that the Ukrainian government is entirely dependent on financial assistance from the West, which runs to tens of billions of dollars a year, excluding the military support, and de facto supports the functioning of the state, diminishing the relative importance of the domestic barons and their influence on state policymaking. What could save Ukraine from a return to its pre-war practices is European integration. Spread over many years, it will require the government in Kiev to continue reforming the state in accordance with EU standards, which should reduce oligarchic influence on the country's political and economic life. This could be facilitated by the inflow of foreign capital, helping to break up existing monopolies and boosting market competitiveness. Post-war reconstruction, coupled with major economic restructuring, will call for the development of new industries and a relative decline in the importance of those sectors which have traditionally had a strong oligarchic presence. There is, however, a risk that the process of rebuilding the country, which will involve funds running into the billions of dollars, may create new oligarchs, which will make money from state-awarded contracts. The government may be tempted to create a new class of state-dependent businessmen, it's an open question whether it will succeed in this. For now, it seems unlikely that puppet fractions controlled by big business will emerge in the Ukrainian parliament, as they did before the invasion. The fight against informal oligarchic influence remains a long and complicated process, which requires sustained pressure from the public, the media, and the international community. Thank you for watching. This video is based on a commentary written by Sławomir Matuszak, Senior Fellow at the Center for Eastern Studies Department for Belarus, Ukraine and Moldova. You'll find a link to the document in the description box. And if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to never miss more stories like this one from the region.